Krishna. requested to speak on chanting the holy names of the Lord today. That was the given topic. So I think you all are heard about that subject. Yes? Okay. Just in case. It's something we do every day. Okay. So Omagyan Timirandasya Girajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruvena Maha. Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine 
nirvisesa sunya vari pasyatya de satarine pancha kalpa thrubischa kripa sindhu bevacha patitanam bhavane byo vaishnave byo namaho namaha Jai Sri Krishna, Jai Tanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasadi Gaur, Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. And it says that there's three things you should always be satisfied with and three things you should never be satisfied with. The three things you should always be satisfied with is money, wife, and food. Okay? And of course for the ladies it's money, husband, and food. <laughs> so in other words, money comes, money goes. Wife comes, wife don't go. <laughs> Husband comes, husband stays. <laughs> and food you get, sometimes you like it, sometimes just, you know, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. So, so these are the things, this is Niti Shastra's something very practical. Always be satisfied with these things and you, you know, you're peaceful, basically. But then there's three things you should never be satisfied. One is chanting the holy names of the Lord. Two is hearing the glories of the Lord. And three is giving in charity. <laughs> in other words, you can't do enough of these three things. <laughs> these are the three things that we don't say, well, I'm sad. No, we want more and more and more. These are the three things that are mentioned in Shastra. And chanting the holy names of the Lord is something that is uh, fundamental to our, pra our progress in devotional service. If you want to improve your Krishna consciousness, and I think everybody does, right? This is a, a feeling that we have. How can I become more Krishna conscious? It's easy. Chant. That's all. If you understand this principle and give that primary attention, maximum attention, you will make spiritual progress. No doubt about it. This is a foolproof, <laughs> foolproof statement given by Shastras and Guru. Chanting brings you closer and closer to Krishna and ultimately pure devotional service. You can do so many other things and those things may be important or they may be not important, but chanting is essential, foremost, and it's the principle of success in all. The Shastras say, it doesn't matter what your position in life is, if you have a lot of material desires, you have no material desires, or you desire liberation, still chant Hare Krishna. Because by chanting Hare Krishna, we are coming directly in contact with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Kali Kale, Namarupa, Krishna Avatar. So in this age, Krishna has descended. Just like 5,000 years ago, we know that Krishna came in his transcendental form as Sri Krishna himself. And he performed his pastimes in Sri Vrindavan Dham. He has come again 535 years ago as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this time he left himself in the form of, of the holy name. The holy name is non-different than Krishna. Nama Chintamani Krishnas Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha Punya Sudya Nitya Mukta Abhinna Tvam Nami Nami No. The word Binna means different. And Abhinna means no difference. There's no difference between Krishna and his name. Not the slightest bit. In fact, Krishna's name is better than Krishna. Why? Because if you commit some offenses to Krishna, the only way you can get relief from those offenses is chanting his name. That's why his name is better in the sense that it's more merciful. 
It's the mercy manifestation in this age. Kaleya dosha nidhi rajan asti eko mahagun kirtana eva krishnasya mukta sangam param vajet. That this age is just full of problems. Your country is pretty good compared to the rest of the world. The rest of the world is really going through hell. Especially the big countries like India, uh, UK, and America. America is upside down now. It's becoming completely lunatic. If you watch the news, don't watch the news. But if you do, you'll see it's going, it's, it's actually becoming mad. Not because of the disease, but because of the effects that the, that the whole idea has on people. And so there are mass, mass riots, killings, suicides, stealing. Police have quit stopping the criminals. They're firing the police. There's no police around. It's going mad. And it's, it's going around many other countries also. And therefore, Lord Chaitanya, he knew the future. He's, he's Krishna himself. He knows Trikala Gyan. He knows past, present, and future. And therefore, he gave the remedy for all the problems in this age, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. In other words, whatever problems you have, I mean, I'll ask you a question. Are any devotees here struggling to become Krishna conscious? Is that a, is that a, yeah, yeah, me too, I'm up, I'm, I got two hands here. And that's a, I mean, that's an obvious answer. We're all struggling to become Krishna conscious. But you want to mitigate your struggle? Chant Hare Krishna. And Prabhupada said, 16 rounds are simply a beginning. Don't think that's the limit. It's not, it's just to get you started. <laughs> He tried, when Prabhupada first came, he said, 64 rounds a day. This was an instruction back in 1968. 64 rounds a day, plus whatever else we were doing. And the devotee said, you know, because, you know, the Americans, they don't take anything easy. They, they fight everything. <laughs> I know, because I'm American, so. <laughs> At least I was brought up in that culture. They don't go along with things so easy. So they said to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, that's impossible. <laughs> They're talking to Prabhupada. Prabhupada, that's impossible. And Prabhupada considered it, and he said, all right, 32. And they said, no, Prabhupada, that's too much. Prabhupada said, 16 and no less. So he gave the minimum, 16 rounds. But he wanted us to understand that our advancement in Krishna consciousness, and he said it many times, he said 95, 99% of your advancement in Krishna consciousness depends on your chanting. And we do kirtan, and kirtan is kind of sweeps in the whole atmosphere and it fills it with the energy of the Lord's mercy. But japa is also a very big part of our practice Japa is a little more harder because we have to somehow focus, we have to concentrate, we have to keep that mind connected to the sound vibration without it wandering everywhere. And at the same time, we have to become determined to continue round after round after round. It can be difficult, especially in this age of Kali, where people are more inclined to, to doing things than to meditation or prayer or any other form of what we say, internal mood. People th think life is out there and I'm here and I gotta be part of it somehow. But spiritual life is about inside. And japa is a very important part of that. So how to improve our japa? Sometimes we ask these questions. Well, I wanna chant japa, uh, but uh, it's too hard. I don't have enough time. Um, I could be doing other things that are more productive. That's how we think sometimes because we're getting things done. And so when we get that mindset, then what happens? We lose the mercy of Krishna. Krishna says, oh, they don't want me so much. All right, so I won't be there. And then it becomes more of a struggle. But if you're struggling and it's 
difficult, but you want it, then Krishna says, let me help that devotee. They want me, and they're trying hard, therefore I will give my mercy in different ways. So when we make that effort to somehow or other focus and chant every day, we find that after some time, it becomes more and more easy and normal and natural. And as it describes, it becomes just you and the holy name. When you get to that point of chanting, there's nothing else but you and the name. You're kind of like in a bubble, and it's just you and that sound vibration, and it just continues. That's what you want to uh, aspire for, that mood of absorption in the holy name, where it's not even an effort anymore. There's no effort anymore. It just flows, because Krishna has come. And therefore, when he's come, that energy is just, just engulfs you with his mercy. But to get there, we have to make that effort. Krishna wants to see how much we really want him. And if you just chant Hare Krishna once without offense, not just one mantra, but one name, it says, whatever sinful activities you've committed in any of your lives, in millions of lives in this material world, all the reactions of those sinful activities are destroyed. One name, pure, one pure name. That's the power of this name. Krishna has invested all his energies, all his mercy, and he's given this as the means for self-realization. Harir Nama, Harir Nama, Harir Nama, Eva Cave alone, Kalon Nasteva, 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 Gatir Anyat. Lord Chaitanya spoke this verse many times to make the point that he said it three times. When you say something three times in Vedic literatures, it means there's no other consideration. Just like if you say something once, there may be another possibility that something else could be included. If you say it twice, the emphasis becomes stronger. But when you say it three times, Prabhupada uses the example. A, a mother is trying to discipline her child. She says, do this. Do this. Do this! Oh, okay, okay, Ma. Okay, I got it. <laughs> so the, the three-time emphasis is an element of completion. Completion. And sometimes the acharyas give another understanding. It's not by karma, once, not by jnana, two, but by bhakti in the form of chanting Hare Krishna. So I'm, I know everyone is chanting, but you know I can say we don't chant enough. Like today is the Akadasi. So the actual principle of Akadasi, according to the strictest regulation of Akadasi, is you chant 24 hours. That's the, that's the principle. You start when the codice starts in the morning. I think today it started around 5 o'clock. And then you chant to the 5 o'clock the next morning. And you don't stop. You don't take nothing to eat, nothing to drink. That's the codice. Now, Prabhupada knew we couldn't follow that. <laughs> so he didn't push it. And so he gave us a concessionary codice. But he did say, on a codice, codice means chanting. In other words, accelerating, increasing, or enchanting. And don't become discouraged, because even if it's difficult, the more you chant, and the more you try to chant nicely, this is the important part, putting some emphasis on quality and attention, struggling with that restless mind, Gradually, you start to really start to enter into the mood of chanting. Krishna wants to give you his name more than we want it. But Krishna is not cheap. He's not going to give it to you unless you actually make that effort. And therefore, quantity helps to build quality. <laughs> quantity increases quality. Why? Because the more you chant, the more you get attuned to it, and after a while, you start to like to chant. It doesn't become any more like, oh God, 16 rounds, Mount Kilimanjaro, I have to climb it. <laughs> oh God, 
and I have a backpack on my back too. <laughs> it's just like, you know, the, the hardest thing in the world to do. 16 rounds, oh my God. Uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. I chanted 16 names. Is that the same thing? No. <laughs> so we try to somehow or other convince ourselves that we got to do it. But then again, that's the wrong mindset. The mindset is I, I get the chant, I want to chant, and I love to chant. If we have that mood and we go into chanting, it becomes, in other words, Krishna says, oh, they liked what they're doing, and they really want to show their their devotion to me. And this is the main point, but Krishna sees your effort, and he's responding accordingly, and he's making the effort to make to help you. And he reminds you how you should chant, what you should do, what you should avoid. But we have to chant more and more and more. Actually, the whole process of bhakti is simply chanting, that's all. When you get to the stage of pure devotional service, that's all you do. You just chant 24-7. Not like a rule or regulation or even a numerical vow. It just becomes something that brings you great satisfaction and happiness. You love to chant. So this chanting is the, the foundation. We love kirtan. But I'm speaking a lot more today about japa. Because <laughs> japa, obviously, it's a lot harder. Or even a little harder, maybe. But one great devotee who was a kirtan leader in our movement, his name was Ayendra, I guess you've heard of him. He said that, he said that kirtan is like getting the injection, and japa is like taking the pills. <laughs> In other words, Eneche Asadi Maya Nasi Badalagi Harinama Mahamantra Lao Tumi Magi. That this is the medicine in this age. The disease is Bavarog. You have you heard of that girl, right? Bavaroga. In Croatia, she's very popular, right? What's her name? Bavaroga. Yeah. Bavaroga. Well, that's that's Sanskrit. Bhavaroga means disease. <laughs> so somehow or other, there's some classical connection here. I don't know what it is, but it is. I like that because it makes good for preaching in this area. <laughs> Bhavaroga. So Bhavaroga, she's not so nice. <laughs> and she'll give you a hard time. And that is called material struggle. We struggle to enjoy in this world. Everyone wants to enjoy but nobody can enjoy. All they can, can do is simply try to enjoy. But chanting Hare Krishna is so nice that you don't have to worry about that. All you have to do is chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> and of course, if you read Srimad Bhagavatam, that's not recommended, and serve and associate with devotees, all these together combined make the process so wonderful. I know, we have families, we have responsibilities, we have to make money. But who makes money nowadays? The government. They're the only ones that print the money. Nobody else makes money. <laughs> you go to work and you, they give you the money and then when you walk or after about two days you're broke again because they take it all back. <laughs> so making money is not so much of a, a focus for devotees. They know it's just... Keep your focus on chanting more and more and more. Like today is Ekadasi. We always make an avow to chant more on Ekadasi. Prabhupada said 25 rounds on Ekadasi. But you can even do more than that. <laughs> 25 is easy. Just just chant, chant. Don't listen to your mind. Your mind says, Prabhu, you know, you don't want to go, you don't want to become a pure devotee too fast. <laughs> And slow down. You got it. You got some time. You know, just take it easy. You know, you know, you you you're not a, you don't want to be a fanatic. You know, fanatics don't last too long. So you know, take it easy. But chanting is not like that. It inspires something within you that is so wonderful that you just want to chant more and more and more. Now, 
I'll give you some, tr I'll give, sometimes devotees want to hear about some tips on how to improve chanting. Yeah? Is that what, would that be good? Yeah. Or you want to hear more philosophy? <laughs> some practical tips? One is don't listen to your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Turn them off. Mr. Mind, come back after a while. Um, I, right now I'm busy. I'm busy with God, so you can go come back when I'm done with God. So one of the tips you can do, and this is Sachinanda Maharaj's very ingenious and very dis, uh, unique way of helping us to keep focus. He says, hear the first Hare on the mantra. We've heard that before, but it's good to be reminded of it because that really makes attention much more developed. In other words, you get, you get more and more opportunities for attention when you really focus on that first Hare, or sometimes first Hare Krishna. It helps you to connect with, and then the rest of the mantra is more, more likely that you'll stay connected. And just keep doing that every time in the first Hare. That's, that's very helpful. Um, what's another example that we can use to improve our chanting? Hmm. Posture, how to sit. Yeah, that will make it, probably you know Prabhupada's japa tape. Sit properly. <laughs> and everybody, all, all of the boys go, mm, okay. <laughs> Mud mudra, that's a mudra. You know, that's pretty good. I showed that to Sachi Nandan Maharaj, he liked that. If you do this with the other hand, you wonder, what, what am I going to do with this hand? You put it here, you stick it over there. You can't figure out what to do with this other hand, you know. Put it over here, arm lock, something. No, you just, this, if you do this, this is a mudra for concentration. This is what yogis use. And it helps. I, I showed Maharaj, he said, it works. <laughs> he liked it, so anyway. Uh, it's this is concentration. So with this hand, you can do this, and with this, you put your beads up here by your heart, not on the floor or behind your back, or some on your head or something. Put it right in front of you, and then you chant like that, and you stay with your back erect. If you can sit through the whole thing, that is good. But sometimes devotees get a little sleepy, or a little restless, so we can also get up and walk. But getting up and walk means there's more opportunities for distraction, obviously. And if you walk, and this is what we learned in Brahmachari Ashram, you look at the floor, because there's nothing to see. <laughs> you look at the floor. And that way you don't think, oh, you know, you're chanting in the temple and then, oh, here she comes again. She wore that sari yesterday. She's wearing it again today. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, you know, your mind goes in and, oh, there he is again. He's the guy that caused me so much trouble. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Mm. So, yeah, the idea is not to look around. We used to call that... Um, Radar Japa. You got that? Radar Japa. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. Hare Krishna, 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 People don't do it as much, but in the old days they used to do it a lot. Jibber japa, you're walking with somebody and they're, they're talking. Yeah, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, really? Oh, she said that? No. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Oh, God. Where are you going after japa? I don't know. Where are you going? I don't know. 
Let's just chant. Okay, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. That's enough. What else can we talk about? <laughs> so, jibber japa, you kind of intersperse the japa with, you know, to, and then we have the famous brahmachari daivavar japa. You got this one. This one is the one. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Krishna, ah, 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 ah. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, That's called dive bomber japa. You don't want to do that one either. <laughs> so these are the first ones in the mode of goodness, and the second one's in the mode of passion, and the third one obviously is in the mode of ignorance. <laughs> but even the one in the mode of goodness is kind of mixed in with ignorance and passion. So sit straight and do three things. First, get your posture. We usually call it the three P's in English. Posture, pronunciation, and prayer. These are the three things. Align your, you know, proper posture, and then concentrate on clearly chanting the holy names. Now, like snicker, 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 room, 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 snicker, 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 room, 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 and one guy he's chanting like that, and he dies, and then he wakes up, and he's in this land. He sees two guys. He said, "Who are you? My name is Snicker, and this is Room, and you've been chanting our name." <laughs> snicker, snicker, snicker. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Clear, clear pronunciation. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Jai Panchatattva Ki Hare. Another little hint that might be very well appreciated by the devotees is when you begin your japa, start off slow. In other words, start off hearing each and every syllable. And gradually, as the concentration on the sound vibration becomes concentrated, in other words, becomes more, the tendency to hear, or the ability to hear, increases. And then you could start hearing more. If you start off too fast, sometimes you, you're missing, and you stay like that through the whole time, and you're missing. But if you start off, and you see, I don't know if you listen to Srila Prabhupada's Japa tape, he starts off very, very slow, and then gradually he picks his speed up, and, and at the end he's really, he's on spontaneous chanting. So that's also important. Hear that sound vibration. Because it's japa meditation. And meditation means to get into the sound completely. Wrong pronunciation will make it hard for you to concentrate. In fact, it becomes impossible. It's so important. Even Prabhupada made fun of us in one lecture on how the devotees were chanting very when we say without clarity in their pronunciation, very important to chant very, very clear and very, very. And it's Hari Rama, it's not Hari Ram. I mean, you can say Hari Ram, but then again, Hari Rama is the actual thing. But it's not Rama, it's Rama. You see the difference? Hari Rama, not Hari Rama, Hari Rama. Because Rama is the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi. And Krishna is Draupadi. <laughs> so that's another name for Krishna. And Draupadi is Krishna. So it's Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm? Got it? Is that okay? No questions? No comments? Yes, okay.
Ramo, he's the Italian barber, right? <laughs> Ramo, Ramo. I got it. <laughs> Ramo. Prabhupada called in Vishnu John Maharaj. And Vishnu John Maharaj has just spent I mean, at least eight to ten hours every day doing Harinam. And that's what it was like in the older days. Devotees did a Harinam for practically the whole day. So Prabhupada had heard that devotees were chanting Ramo. And he called in Vishnu John Maharaj, who was kind of like the leader of the devotees in, the, in Kirtan. And he started to speak and he said, what is this Ramo? It's not Ramo, it's Rama. Because in Bengal, if you're Bengal, we'll let you do it. Because Bengal, you know, Bengalis always change the A to O. They do that with all the words, right? Correct? Correct? <laughs> There's no Bengalis here today? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right, they change A to O all the time, yeah. But there, but Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is a Sanskrit mantra. It's not a Bengali mantra. It's Sanskrit. So, Brahma said, chant Hare Krishna and Rama. And he said, if we continue to do this, our whole society will be ruined. He said that. And I now, even today, when I listen to devotees chant, they chant Ramo. Mm -hmm. We have to be careful because, I mean, Prabhupada was strong. He said it one time, and he gave very clear and strong statements that this should strictly be avoided. I remember I was in, I was in Mayapur, and I was leading the Mongol Arti in Sri Sri Radha, uh, Radha Madhava's temple. And you know, it's filled with all senior devotees, and so I'm leading the Mongol Arti. And I met, there was one lady there who I knew she was there, and she would listen to make sure whoever was chanting did not chant Ramo. And if, she, if somebody did, she would chastise him. <laughs> Didn't matter who he was, he could be God, and she would still chastise him. She was strong. Whoa, was she strong. So I led the Mongol Arti, and I finished, and I kind of was starting to walk away, and she's coming right towards me. I'm thinking, oh no, I'm going to get it. <laughs> and she came up to me and she said, Marge, thank you for not chanting Ramo. <laughs> I said, thank you for not thinking that I might have chanted Mar Ramo. So. So yeah, it's 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 a concern. In certain circles it's very strong. In other areas they let it go. And sometimes now it's become so commonplace that nobody says anything anymore. And that's the danger. It's Rama. Rama is another name. It's just you know when I think of Rama I think of the Italian barber. That's all I <laughs> So I so we should very be very careful to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And if you keep clear pronunciation, which is easy to do when you start off slow, and you can work on your pronunciation, then at one point, after a little while, you can start to offer your heart into the mantra. Then you start putting your emotions into the sound that you're creating of the chanting of the Maha Mantra. Then you're offering your love, bhakti, along with the sound to Krishna. And that is actually, that's why it says posture, pronunciation, and prayer. So prayer is, is actually the Maha Mantra is a prayer. Prabhupada gave us the definition. He said, chanting Maha Mantra means, my dear Lord, I want to serve. Please give me service. That's the actual 
translation that's given by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur in his. And so we have in front of us the most precious gift, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, but we have to take advantage of it. And I'll mention this again because I think it's the most important part of my lecture. We should not be satisfied with 16 rounds. 16 rounds is, we say that for during the initiation ceremonies, we ask the candidates who are getting initiate, initiates, do you agree to chant at least 16 rounds? We always say at least. That means that's, that's minimum. And Bhakti, no, I'm sorry, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains that by chanting every day your rounds, you will come to the point of chanting always. Think about that. Regularly chanting carefully our rounds every day, we get a taste for chanting. As we increase, we also increase our desire to chant. And as our desire to chant increases, and then, if you get a taste for the holy name, then you understand what this Krishna consciousness is about. That's what we want, that taste, that sweet taste that is there in our japa. It's there mostly with kirtan, and that we always look forward to, and that's wonderful. That's our process, harinam sankirtan. But in order to appreciate the entire process, we have to also understand that a very intricate part of our spiritual growth is becoming really serious in chanting our Hare. Therefore, it's the most important time of the day and should be given the maximum amount of attention. Not that we squeeze the rounds in or we chant two rounds here or four rounds there, five rounds there, one round there, six rounds there, and then we add it all up. And then we get, you know, like it's nine o'clock at night and I still have two rounds to go. As Kadambakana Maharaj called it, the late night Japa Club. <laughs> and, and those rounds are the hardest rounds. Two rounds at nine o'clock takes you about an hour. <laughs> you all know what I'm ex explaining. So that, try to get your rounds. Early. And I'll tell you a real secret. You want to know the, the secret? I was waiting to the end to give you this one. If you really want to make advancement in spiritual life, I mean seriously, chant all your rounds the first thing in the morning. Yes, Mataji? She does it. She told me. Yeah, she's, she has a, such a taste for the holy name. Chant 16 rounds before you do anything. Turn off the phone, turn off the mind, turn off everything, chant 16 rounds. There was two devotees, they're brothers, they're from London. Their father's also a devotee. Their father used to get angry quite easy. And these brothers are both kirtan ears. One of them is quite popular in, in London. And he told his father, his father, he said, you know, you get angry quite <laughs> a lot. The father said, yeah, I know, I, I, this, this is just the way I am. <laughs> and he was a devotee, but he couldn't control his anger. He said, all right, here, try this, Dad. Chant 16 rounds, first thing, do it for as long as you can. And he did it, and his anger was gone. <laughs> and that's a, that's a true story. It was told to me by the, by the, the sons himself. So this chanting early in the morning, I mean it might be difficult, but don't worry. There's more difficult things in life than that. And that is when you die, you have to face the idea you're dying. But if you're with the holy name, it's not bad at all. Then it's just moving on to a next destination. So it's not as bad as death. <laughs> I mean, it's actually quite nice. So try to make this is, I'm telling you, that this is not an exaggeration. If you really want to improve your, jo your spiritual life, chant 16 rounds, first thing. Get up early enough, chant. Put everything else aside, chant 16 rounds. You can walk, you can sit, you can even take a japa walk outside, chant 16 rounds. 
When you get those 16 rounds done, your day is different than any other days. It's a whole different experience. Why? Because Prabhupada said that you should know, he said it in this way, you should know that you're at any time you can be victimized by Maya when you haven't finished your 16 rounds. Because that 16 rounds is a promise to the spiritual master. It's a vow. And when you make that vow, as soon as you make that vow, there is something special that happens. And what is that specialty? Is that you, you really you receive ex directly the mercy of the spiritual master. But we must, must do it early. Early is the best. Uh, I know Devan Reed Swami, of course I don't think he comes here, but he tells all his devotees, all his disciples, chant 16 rounds, first thing you do. It's so important. I was listening to one of his devotees were talking, there was a little talk show they run, he said, and he's a disciple of Maharaj, he said, nobody talks to me until I get my rounds done. <laughs> and he's got a family, he's got children, he's got a wife, he's he said, I just closed myself off 16 rounds. Then I'm with you the rest of the day. <laughs> so that if we can do that, we can do it with devotees. And that's recommended. But if we can't do it, at least finish 16 rounds before breakfast. And that much we can do. Before you take that first meal, make that a vow. My dear Lord, I will not eat breakfast until I finish 16 rounds. And I guarantee, and I can, I'll even give you a written guarantee if you want, that your spiritual life will increase tremendously. Because this is the essence of everything we do. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare. And the protection you get from chanting, I'll tell this one little story, kind of illustrates how merciful or how powerful. Two devotees were given an assignment by Srila Prabhupada to preach in Bangladesh during the war in 1972. They were both sannyasis and they went to Bangladesh to preach. Now it was difficult because they were in the middle of a war zone. And so they were working behind the scenes to preach in an Islam, in a half Hindu and a half Islamic country. They were trying to preach to the Hindus there. So it became a little difficult. And Prabhupada realized from the news reports he was getting, the war was getting worse. So he started to write letters to try to reach these devotees to bring him back. But the letters never got to them because of the war. And Prabhupada was worried. And after some time, some of the people were said to these two sannyasis, I think it's time for you to leave. You know, it's getting really dangerous here. If they catch you, you're finished. So they took that as an advice and they decided to leave. So they, there was buses that were leaving the refugees. They were allowing refugees to go out of the country. But occasionally the army would stop the buses and see who was on the bus. And if you weren't, you know, Islamic, they would take you off and that was the last thing you were finished. They'd shoot you. They'd put you in front of a fiery squad. So the two sannyasis are on the bus and they get stopped by the military. They find these two sannyasis. They take them off the bus. They put them in front of the firing squad and they're about ready to shoot them. And one of them, he gets excited and he says, hey, we're going back to Krishna. We're going back to Krishna. He starts talking. He says, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And the other devotees, oh, oh yeah. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. And the Islamic army got bewildered. And the guy, the, the commander said, all right, get out of here. Go, go, go. And they just put him back on the bus and they let him go. Yeah, true story. Yeah, Bush to Krishna Maharaj and Brahmananda Swami. And these were the two devotees that were on the... Yeah, so the holy name will protect you. That's, that's another thing. If you're looking for protection, Hare Krishna. It'll protect you against everything. But you will not be protected against facing danger. Prabhupada said you will have to face danger, but you will be protected if you chant Hare Krishna. 
It's not like, well, I'm chanting Hare Krishna, there will be no danger in my life. No, no, <laughs> it's not like that. There will be danger, this is the material world, but the protection is there with chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. So I would really encourage all the devotees to really go deeper into their chanting, try to increase the quality, avoid the offenses in chanting, and chant more. You get to 16 rounds, you think, nah, let me chant some more. I'll do 18. You get to 18, nah, why not 20? Oh, 20, 24. So chant more and more and more. And then you'll see there will be a big difference in your spiritual life. Big difference, not a small difference. If you make the holy name foremost, Krishna will make you first. <laughs> That's how it is. Because in this age, and the whole, I mean, Srimad Bhagavatam is all about the holy name. That's all it is. And the last verse in Srimad Bhagavatam sums up the entire Bhagavatam. It glorifies Sri Haridam Sankirtan. That's the last verse in that scripture. And throughout, Prabhupada emphasizes the importance of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. When you're happy, chant Hare Krishna. When you're not happy, chant Hare Krishna. When you're, when you're fighting with your husband and wife, chant Hare Krishna. Whatever you're doing, chant Hare Krishna. That's all. There's one story where one man, he goes to the shop and he buys this lamp, an unusual lamp. And uh, he's thinking, hmm. And then he, he kind of looks at it. And all of a sudden a genie, you know, a genie comes out of the lamp. It's like the, the magician of the lamp, he comes out. He said, I'm the genie of the lamp. Give me something to do and if you don't, I'll kill you. <laughs> and so this man who bought it, he was a king. So he said, all right, I'll wash all the windows in my kingdom. So the genie comes back after a while, all done, done. <laughs> uh, oh, give me something to do or I'll kill you. So he thinks of another thing and the genie comes back after a while. I want something to do. And then he thinks, all right, chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> so the, the genie's chanting Hare Krishna and he can't get, I mean, he can't ever finish. <laughs> so yeah, that was the story was that you know you could just keep chanting and chanting and chanting. Right, Shasho? That's what you do all day, right? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> so we want to increase our Krishna consciousness because the more you can increase your Krishna consciousness, the more happy you, you are. Naranjan Swami Maharaj, one of the one of the most powerful, most humble devotees in our movement. He doesn't come here so much. He's one. Of, he's really a wonderful devotee, and most amazing. He told me he preaches in the he preaches in the Soviet Union. He preaches in Ukraine, many areas there. He said devotees were coming with me for problems, so many problems, and I was trying to help them. But then I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll give every class for the next year, every class that I give, and he was giving practically one class a day, minimum, on chanting the holy name. So for a whole year, he spoke only on chanting. And he said, after one year, the problems reduced more than 50%. <laughs> the problem, there's only one problem, we don't chant enough. <laughs> That's the only problem. Chant more and more and more. I, I know I sound like a broken record, you know. <laughs> but, you know, I'm kind of like, I can't think of anything else. I just, chanting to me is like a, an experience that I look forward to every day. Something I love to do and something I want to do more. I wish I could chant all day, but I got other things that I'm supposed to do also. 
So chanting is so much directly connected with the association of Krishna. The, the more we do it, and the more Krishna's mercy comes. And that's the idea, to chant more and more and more. Okay, so I'll stop there. Is there any comments or questions? Anybody struggling with their japa, some kind of, you know, thing that about their japa they want to get clarified or some kind of, you know, problem? Yes, yes. And this devotee likes to chant japa. He comes every morning for japa. He rides his bicycle and he parks his bicycle right near where I live. And then he comes walking into the temple and he sits, chants his japa and he gets back on his bicycle and leaves. <laughs> but he loves to chant japa. I can tell, I can see some people don't like to chant but they chant and there's some people who like to chant and they chant. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, if uh, I know one devotee who struggle with chanting 16 rounds because he become tired after some chanting. And uh, do you have general, some general answer how to do it? Be because uh, he is, uh, in all respect, he is good devotee. He practices. He, get, he gets tired. Uh, yes, he chant, I don't know, six or eight rounds and uh, do some things and come back, chant two rounds and at the evening three rounds. But really, I ask him why you don't chant 16 rounds even when you have time. After some time, I become tired and I have to stop. Quite interesting, yeah. You have to practice. Make sure you have enough rest. If you're tired in the morning when you get up, then it becomes more difficult. So you should be rested. But if you're rested, the the actually the holy name gives you energy. It doesn't make you tired, it gives you energy. If you're chanting nicely, that is. Practice. If it becomes too difficult, then walk around. If it's then if that doesn't find you find that more difficult, sit down and chant. It's something you have to work at. Japa is a struggle. Until you get to a certain level of spiritual practice, then it becomes more natural. So you have to go for it. It's just a matter of getting to that level where it becomes more natural. Yes, Dennis. <laughs> Uh, Maharaj, I found myself, I find myself, um, after some time of chanting, um, um, I want to give a mind a break. So I have a japa in one hand and this finger is free mm -hmm. and I start to grab things and do things with, with, uh, with I don't know, some service or something. You know. While you're chanting, you mean? Yeah, too to finish the rounds and uh, to do something and to well, stay awake and... It's mentioned that japa uh, should be done exclusive without any other activity. It's called japa meditation. So that that other activity means you're what is called, you're doing what is called uh, vishepa. Vishepa means distracted japa. Um, if you have to sit down, drink a glass of water, relax, <laughs> maybe read a sloka in the Srimad Bhagavatam, and then go back to chanting. But doing things and chanting, best if you want to do something, best to stop your japa, and then just do that and then go back to your japa. One thing at a time. Yeah, it's japa meditation. That's what it is. It means you have to focus. <laughs> have you ever talked to somebody on the phone who's not listening to you? <laughs> yes. Uh, all right, Krishna. Hey, Uros, how are you? Oh. 
and he's talking to his wife in the background. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm here, I'm here. Keep talking, all right. He's not there. He's with somebody else, and he, every once in a while he jumps back into the conversation. <laughs> you just think, you know, go ahead and talk, to, and you want to hang up the phone. So you call Krishna. You say, my dear Krishna, please come, and then when he comes, you don't pay him attention. Not good. You, japa means to call Krishna. And so when he, and if you're calling him and he's, and he's coming by the sound of your calling, then after you don't stop paying attention to him, you keep, you give him more and more attention. Krishna likes attention. That's why he, he was voted God, because he, 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 wants, he wants attention. <laughs> But everyone wants attention, right? See, see this guy, he wants attention. Okay, he got it. <laughs> everyone wants attention. But Krishna especially, because he's the source of everything. And he knows by giving us, giving him attention, we become benefited. We become benefited by giving Krishna attention. So don't mix in other activities. It doesn't. It's considered to be offensive chanting. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, if you find it too difficult, you can slow down. You can read a verse or drink a glass of water. But don't continue with japa and then, at the same time, you know, do something else like that. Now, there are, as, there is Prabhupada's statement, 16 rounds on the beads, innumerable rounds off the beads. So you can chant throughout the day when you're not doing your prescribed number, then you can do that. So you can do something like when you're walking or you're, say you're cooking or you're walking or you're doing something, you can chant. In fact, it's recommended. Always remember Krishna. That's the, that's, the, that's the goal, to always remember Krishna. So even while you're doing other things, you can chant, but not on the beads. The beads are, are special for your, your numerical vow. Mm -hmm. Okay? Anything else? Yes, Mataji. Oh, okay. Uh, hey, Mungi. Hey, Mungi, right? Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't. What? It wasn't my. F I don't get the credit. It goes to Urukram. He 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 said if I didn't do this, then he would not allow me to come into the shop okay. anymore to buy anything. <laughs> Thanks to Urukram also. Yeah, it's Urukram. For this really... And so he, give it to, he gets all the credit. He forced me. <laughs> okay, thank to Urukram for this very essential um, topic for our uh, spiritual practice. I just uh, wonder, you um, recently, actually maybe a couple of years ago, you uh, uh, sh share with us this very inspiring small book, uh, Japa Affirmation. Yeah. And in that amazing book, it's also described how we have a different kind of opticals while, while we're chanting, mm. external one and internal one. So uh, externally, we have be, um, we, that can be some noise or some persons or uh, crowds and whatever. But it's somehow easier to pacify that kind of obstacle. But internal one could be also not only mental, but emotional, different kind. So my question is also practical but also philosophical. The practical one is what can we do to somehow pacify these uh, internal ob obstacles um, and um, somehow to <laughs> develop some something, some technique in order to really be um, surrounded, sur surrendered to these um, our holy activities of the well, chant. <clears throat> you have. <clears throat> I'll give you an example. Yeah. <clears throat> I was preaching in one city in America. And there was one psych 
psychiatrist was coming to the temple. <clears throat> so he's dealing with people who have psychological problems. That's his profession. And, you know, he has a full schedule every day. <clears throat> so I said to him, what do you tell your patients? I wanted to know the secret. He said, <clears throat> he said, I can't tell them not to worry. Doesn't work. But I tell them, you like to worry, okay? Between four o'clock and six o'clock, this is the time for worrying. You can't worry any other time. This is your worry time. Now you look forward to that time and you can worry at that time. And so I got the point. So when you're chanting Japa, you tell your mind, oh, you want to think about this, I'll see you later. <laughs> I promise I'll come back and listen to whatever nonsense you want to tell me later. <laughs> but not now. Now is the time for Krishna. If you keep telling your mind, later. Don't say no. If it says no, then the mind will say, who are you to tell me no? <laughs> Later. All right, later. Okay, good. Postpone all of these ideas, thoughts, and plans that are coming up in your emotional experience. Because I can tell you <clears throat> one thing for sure. As soon as you start chanting japa, the things that's most important in your life come into your mind. Happens all the time, right? As soon as you begin your japa, the problems come the questions come, the plans come, everything that your life is surrounded with, especially the main things, become part of your consciousness when you begin japa. It's just the way japa is. Japa brings these things to the forefront, but then you have to let them go. Just don't focus on them. Say, later, I'll deal with it later, like that. And keep doing that until you can again come back just to the chanting. Don't allow your mind to somehow or convince you that it's important now to solve this problem which you can't solve. <laughs> You're trying to solve problems, but you can't really solve them. Wait till you finish, then go to the problems. Thank you so much. Can I also... But then the positive point of that is pray to Krishna. My dear Lord, give me shelter in your holy name. Give me shelter. Free me from all of these distractions that are keeping me away from taking shelter. Mm -hmm. Prayer is very powerful. Individual prayers that we can offer during the time when we're chanting also. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Can I add just... Well, actually, I have a one small question add to that. Um, actually, I heard from Chaitanya Charan Prabhu. He is very amazing, and he giving also different tools in that regard, but he also said that we need to have a different kind of weapons. Also, this is really amazing practical one, but what could be also a philosophical one also to pacify our mind? A, a, a very good um, philosophical argument to pacify our mind. Yeah, you but can do that. My dear mind, <laughs> who is it? Uh, Raghunath Das Goswami has written uh, Mana Shiksha. Mana means mind and Shiksha means instructions. Twelve verses, eleven verses and one Falastuti or ben benefit verse. In each one of these verses he addresses his mind. First time, sometimes he gets strong with the mind. Sometimes he speaks sweetly to the mind. Sometimes he speaks in between, saying different things. He approaches his mind in different ways just to get the mind to listen and do the right thing. So those prayers are also helpful in understanding that the mind, and Prabhupada used to say, what is this mind? Just here, that's all. What is this mind? Just here. Listen to the sound. If the sound is not loud enough, increase your volume in your chanting. Mm -hmm. Then you can hear better. But make sure you hear. Hearing brings about 
slowly, gradually concentration like that. And that will push out these other thoughts. The more you allow your mind to think about these other thoughts, the stronger these thoughts get. So when you first see these other thoughts coming into your mind, immediately push them out. Because you allow them to stay, they become stronger and stronger. And then they become harder to get free for them. Mm -hmm. Especially if you have a problem in your life and you have to solve this problem. It always comes up in Japa. Right? Just the way it is. Okay, I don't want to take up too much time because I think you have, is the feast is now? Yes? Okay, I think we also have a birthday today. Whose birthday is it? Is it, is it mine? No, no, it's not mine. Yeah, okay, I thought it was mine. Anyway, I was thinking of having two birthdays a year. So just in case you miss one of them, you can catch the second one. It's Urukram. And you know, there's another person who was born on the same day. What's his name? Abhinandan. Oh, yeah. So, then just as that's coincidental, two on one day. Huh? That's pretty good. We don't usually get that. <laughs> uh, but we say happy birthday, but when you came out, you weren't so happy. Now you're happy. <laughs> Happiness doesn't come when you start popping out of your mother's womb, you know. It's like you're crying. Ah, here I am, the material world. Let me hide, you know. Happy birthday. I mean, they slap you on the butt just to get you to breathe, you know. The, the mother is, you know, she's gone through 36 hours of struggle to get you to come out. It's, I mean, I don't, I don't know what it's like to be a mother because I, and I passed up that program in this life. But maybe in a previous life I had that experience. But it, it's not easy. That's why mothers are glorified. But uh, just to bring you into the world, whew, a big job for both of them, so it's not easy. But now it's happy birthday, okay. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki, Sri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai.